Hi and welcome to your logical step. Today I'm going to talk to you about wireless. This is the second part in our wireless discussion. I'm first going to explain to you wireless security and then I'm going to give you an overview of the 802.11 protocol. Now when you're setting up your wireless security it's very important that you implement the correct wireless protocol. Now your first choice will be whether or not to implement a security but you need to remember that if you don't implement some form of encryption that the wireless transmission that's happening in your house will also go beyond the boundaries of your house up to 30 meters. So that means a drive-by hacker or someone walking by with a wireless device could um, get onto your system and could access your information. So it would be good to implement security. Now the security choices you'll have will be WEP, WEP. Now this is a very old security protocol and it has been shown that the average hacker can break this within a matter of minutes. So it would be a good one to go for. The next choice you'll have is WPA or WPA2 and these are good. These are secure and stable. So I would suggest you implement the WPA protocols. And finally, and the protocol that I have got at home is MAC address filtering. Now this is really great. Your MAC address is your machine address code. Um, every piece of equipment on a network has machine address. It's a hexadecimal number and it identifies your manufacturer and your equipment. It's quite unique. And with MAC filtering, only a piece of equipment without a MAC address will be allowed onto your network. So if your security offers you MAC address filtering, I suggest you implement MAC address filtering alongside WPA and then you'll have a really good secure system. Now the 802.11, you've probably heard of them, and there's quite a few, but presently in use you'll come across the 802.11b, g and n. Now the 802.11b is a really early critical, and it's considered to be quite secure and stable up until 2001. The protocol is quite slow, it only transmits at 11 megabits per second and the frequency it uses is 2.4 MHz. Now this is a flaky frequency. It's subject to interference from um, baby monitors, cordless phones and Bluetooth devices. So you kind of find that this will be free, freaky and flaky. The next protocol is the 802.11G. Most equipment nowadays come with 802.11G and it's pretty good. It transmits at 54 megabits per second, so that's much faster, but it uses the 2.4 megahertz frequency, so it's still subject to the flaky freakiness that you get with DB. But in 2009, most companies are now rolling out the 802.11n, and this is cool. It transmits at 600 megabits per second, so it's really fast, and it also uses the 5 megahertz frequency so it doesn't have that flakiness but for backward compatibility they also implemented the 2.4 megahertz frequency so if you're in an area or a network that isn't compatible or doesn't have the 802.11n in place the system will fall back to the 802.11b or g so it's really great and if you can find equipment that says IEEE 802.11n I'd go for that in the next session, I'm going to explain to you and show you a few diagrams on how to set up a wireless network for the home users. Um, I'm also going to introduce you to um, the militarized zone, a DMZ. This is really good if you want to set up um, um, e-tailer and you want people to access your system, but you want your home system secure. I'm going to show you how to fit your firewall, and this can be a network firewall. And then finally, I'm going to show you how to fit a PCI card to a desktop box. But for now, thanks for coming and I hope to see you later. Bye.